Okay. Yeah. Yes, it's uh, the same topic, but from a different point of view. Um, uh, I hope uh, it would be interesting for you. First of all, who uh, Constanzo Chano was, uh, it was a bad guy in uniform, an Italian naval officer, gold medal in the First World War, and a politician, senator under the fascist regime. He was the father of Galeazzo Ciano, Mussolini's son-in-law. So he was a primary figure in the fascist regime, leader of the first fascist squadrons in Livorno, a member of the March on Rome in October 1922. Costanzo Ciano died in 1939. His fame led in Italy to name several streets, raising of statues, the positioning of busts and other similar initiatives. In La Spezia, my town, the major in 1939 commissioned the creation of a big bronze statue to the sculptor Francesco Messina. So the sculpture actually has uh, an artistic value. You can see here the original statue with uh, the base. Uh, and in, uh, in, this, in this picture, uh, the picture in uh, the local press uh, during uh, the inauguration. And uh, you see now here, the statue in the very uh, lateral corner of the Neville Museum in, uh, in my town. Uh, it was placed, so the statue was placed in 1940 in the city center with a great inauguration. At the end of the war, it was removed and hidden in a medieval castle close to the public. Then in the 70s, it was given to the Naval Museum of the city, which still holds it in a lateral and uh, undervalued corner. The museum answered to the defense uh, ministry. The Uber community is quite aware of the existence of the statue because every now and then it opens a controversy in the local press who wants to put it in a public space because of the artistic value mm -hmm. and who does not. In the past, I have uh, publicly expressed my thoughts against moving the statue in a public square. From this situation, I had the idea of a public history educational project. It has been prepared since uh, last spring with meetings, research, and data collection, and uh, it will start from the end of this September. I present here not so much the syllabus, uh, if we have questions, of course, uh, I will answer, but the first results of this preparation, together with my consideration and hope of receiving from you some suggestions and remarks too. The project will take place within the course of digital public history in the course degree of digital humanities at the University of Pisa, and will include the traditional lessons, group works, face-to-face -face and remote interviews with the main stakeholders of the city. Um, the aim is to create a participatory process of contextualization of the station in order to, uh, put, uh, to valorize it where it is now, not to move uh, in a public uh, civic um, center of the, of the city, to put in a square. The title of the course project in uh, the deliberate reference to the council culture movement is Celebrate Culture, a path of shared valorization of a controversial statue. The university, my university, considered the project innovative and gave me a small budget in order to do it. So the preparation with the stakeholders. First, the director of the Nava Museum and also uh, an, an alternative guide of the, of the museum itself. The reaction was enthusiasm. The director couldn't wait to find a serious way out of the problem of valorizing an important item, historically interesting, but 
disputed. The Ministry of Defense granted the collaboration in finding the sources. Actually, they gave me everything they have, uh, but forbid the director from recording video interviews and participating in public lectures or lessons. Mm. Second, the municipality, that is the major. The reaction was relief. At the beginning, he hoped that the problem wasn't of the municipality, it is, because the statute formally is of the municipality. Mm -hmm. So the propriety is the municipality. Later, he welcomed my idea because he entrusts the management of the problem to an authoritative and independent body, the university. Third, the representative of the local National Institute of the Resistance and the Unitary Committee of the Resistance. The reaction was cautious acceptance. They fear the fascist values would somehow be announced, but the respect for the institution I represented convinced them. Furthermore, they know me personally as a scholar, but also as an anti-fascist person. Fourth, an intellectual, a writer. The reaction was a complete acceptance and understanding. The audiences, plural, aren't obviously yet involved. They will be. I was thinking of citizenship via social networks and school with face-to-face -face meetings. The idea will be to ask on social networks if there are any photographs or memories of the inauguration of the statue or its movement. As regards to school, I thought to ask collaboration for some panels on cancel culture movement. The project will be take place in a particular political environment. After decades of left-wing administration, the city is led now by a center-right council in its second uh, term. The deputy major is also a par uh, parliamentarian. She belongs to Georgia Meloni's party. Mm. However, there are no people in the council who have made pro-fascist uh, statements. Uh, the major speech of the national holiday in, uh, in Italy, the 25th of April, in remembry of the resistance and the liberation, uh, was completely respectful of constitutional values. As I think you know, Italy is now a right-wing government with some important experts, for instance, the president of the Senate, who have declared themselves fascist or who do not hide their sympathies for fascists. I conclude with some questions to you, of course. <laughs> First, is this project an example of political activism of a public historian? In my opinion, yes, but only for a certain point of view. The success of this partial war uh, is, is uh, due to the fact that it has not been considered by the stakeholders as a political activity as an activism, but as a didactic, didactic, educational and research activity. Yes, because I will help hopefully to solve a periodically topic of controversy inside my community using the public history practices and methods. This is my goal. And uh, maybe it's, it's a different way uh, to approach the uh, fascism history, not only by celebration of the victims uh, of the resistance, but not, is not activist, because it's me, my sensibilis, sensibility as public historian, my personal view of this discipline, who chose the topic. I was not, not asked for, not by institution, not by the community. It is not because as I deduced from these meetings uh, with stakeholders, they think that the statue's real meaning, its history is a cold case, uh, is closed, is history. We know it's not true, but this, this is what they think. Maybe I will be 
who the person we will uh, sweep the dust out from the rug. So should I? Mm. Uh, then there, there were no negative reaction from stakeholders, but uh, this is not due to my weight as a public historian or as a citizen, but as a scholar. Up to now, the university won in confront to the pure public historian. There will probably be controversies when it comes out on social network. How do you think could this be managed? Should I even there make my academic weight count? Conclusion, about activism pH, the problem is not, in my opinion, how to do it, <clears throat> at least, is not the main issue. Who, what, and why are the real problems? Who chose the topic and for which goals? Are we really aware of what we are doing? Mm -hmm. Thank you.